let's talk some more rules. And today we're going to be talking about charging and tripping. So tripping, if I were to do anything to get in the way, put my leg out or get in the way of my opponent to where they end up tripping over my leg, my foot or anything like that, that would be considered a tripping foul. Now a charging is where my opponent has an established position. They're planted down. It could be for a screen. It could be for just their playing defense or straight up. And you or me, whoever is dribbling the ball or the other person comes in and either shoves, bumps, or shifts them off of their established position, then that would be considered a charge. Next, we'll be talking about free throw shooting. Free throw shooting, you want to shoot free throws that are closer to the basket in established form. Like we talked about earlier, a great way of doing so is practicing with free throws. And it, it starts from pretty much from that and builds up to your starting. It's the same thing, except for your distance, further back away from the basket. So you still want to keep solid base, feet, shoulder width are a little bit narrow, distance apart, you want to have that tip on the ball, you want to keep your elbow in, and when, after the motion, you want to hold your follow through. And let's also talk about when you take a three-point shot. In most cases, you would, three-point shot is Obviously, it's further away, so it's more difficult than a layup or a mid range jumper. So, it's kind of um, common practice to, if you can, drive closer to the basket to get a layup or mid range shot. But if there's a lot of, if it's really crowded in the paint or the defense is denying you from driving, they're then giving you an open shot. Not in those cases, you should always take an open three-point shot. It's practice. You can see your reps in, you want to maintain the same form. Be sure to take breaks while you're doing your shooting practice because as fatigue sets in, your form starts to deteriorate. And as your form starts to deteriorate, and if you get injury with your reps deteriorating form, then that's what's going to happen. So you want to make sure you're always trying to maintain yourself. Take, find a, a good rep range. What you can be at while you're still fresh, and after that, after you start to feel fatigue, take a break, drink some water, take a couple minutes to allow yourself to catch your breath. And if you feel the actual legs underneath you, go ahead and jump back in for another round. Well, another thing I'd say that's different from mid range and free throw shooting is that you are going to use more power from your legs, so you might squat down a little more. And it, tend to explode with your calves and um, as your legs are extending. That helps you create more uh, distance on the shot and range. Now we'll be talking about a dribbling technique that you use after you're moving full speed with the ball on, in this case, how to stop after you're dribbling with your calorie. So, and that's called the one-two stop. We covered a little bit about the one-two stop before, but this is, this is like an emphasis on the importance of applying the one-two stop. So, the one-two stop, that's the best one of the best ways to decelerate, to come to a stop after moving full speed. And with technique and practice, you can learn how to do this without um, hurting your legs. So, typically, if I were to come off the screen to shoot the ball, and then put the charger to the ball, so if I'm facing the basket, I'm moving from my right side, I would want to my left leg first, and then my right leg stop. So from this position, I might try to retreat or find a pass. And the other way, by traveling all the way to the basket, all the way to the basket, traveling to my left side, so that's my first step. I would want to take my first step, maybe 
is the right one. From here, I can run it. So, those are just little techniques and applications of using the one, the one two stop after full speed. And here, we'll just give you some demonstration. Let's talk rebounding and what it takes to be a good rebounder. So what skill you should have. Now, there is a couple things, but I think the main things would be vision, balance, and your position. So always following the ball, assuming that your teammate will miss, going up for that, the timing, going up for the ball, and coming back down with a strong Either you're going to come back down to dribble or pass if you're on defense, or you're going to try and stay up there to shoot and make in that shot. So with positioning is being able to put yourself, if you're playing defense, putting yourself between the, the hoop, you, your opponent, boxing out and being ready to jump up for the rebound. Or if you're playing offense, being able to come around the defender who's going to be boxing you out and being able to tip the ball to be able to then finish the shot. The next part is going to be about moving off the ball and how to receive the ball and get open in the low post while you're getting denied. So this is this will be a lot easier like watching the demonstration, but so essentially someone the person that's guarding me is marking the space in front of me to deny me um, the pass in front of me. Typically, I would use my hands and my body to ask for the pass over my head of the basket. I would be able to slow step the ball like this, but covering the pass, I would try to use my body to catch the ball over my head. As the ball is coming, in full position, a little bump, not too obvious to where the target ball foul. Touch, and blocking action, denying, so I'm just back to the body in full position. Then we're going to try and try the next one. So this next session, I have a little um, book instruction giving you guys an example of how to use a backdoor cut incorporating the screen. So this involves three people if you're practicing. So here's how it looks. I don't have three people with me at the moment. But so you have a person with the ball right here. Number two is marked, and the sprinter is expecting number three to run around, maybe keep the ball around number two. But we're still anticipating that there's a cut. So you're faking the movement here, the picture using the screen. Then you get the little bit more close to the with the ball and the screen. let's talk defense and anticipation when it comes to defense so the biggest thing is when you are playing offense you have the advantage because you know what you're doing so the defender it has to in a way react to whatever you do so if we anticipate what will happen it's not guessing it's calculating finding thinking okay in the in the last three plays they've always dribbled and gone this way having that in the back of your head so that you're ready and you're not caught off guard whenever something happens 
So being able to take calculated decisions, not just guessing to where you think your opponent, the person with the ball dribbling, will end up going or doing. So in this example, we're going to be talking about two different ways of utilizing a jump. So the first one is jumping off two legs in which you're at a standstill. And a lot of times, this is what you'd use when rebounding. So if I'm, I'm expecting a shot, I've prepared myself in a position where I think the ball will, will be based on how I'm looking at the trajectory of my teammate's shot or the opposing team's shot. I'm in position you want to see at a comfortable base, bend your knees to ensure the slightest position, and so you use your arms to slow it up. It's all about using momentum. So all this kinetic energy will propel you up vertically. And so that's that's how that's the jump that you'd use typically when you're rebounding. The next one is jumping off of one leg while you're in motion. This is something that you'd use typically when you're doing a layup. So I can demonstrate that right here. So when I'm laying the ball up with my right hand, fundamentally, you want to jump off with your left foot, and vice versa. When I'm laying the ball with my left hand, you want to jump off with your right foot. So here's how that looks. Those are examples of jumping off of one leg while you're in motion doing layups. And typically, so I can give some examples of jumping off two legs while rebounding. Here, Absorb the impact. You don't want to just land and let your knee absorb and fall. That's how you'll lead to that's how that's what will lead to knee injuries. Being clutch. Now let's talk about what it means to be clutch. So it's if a person is always ready under pressure, they know they're gonna make the last shot and they do or they want that ball because they know that they're going to get the rebound, they're going to make their three-point. It's having the mentality and the attitude that you are going to deliver no matter in what situation you're in. And that's a really good mentality to have in basketball because you're always under pressure if it's someone's right in front of you, right in front of you guarding you or you only have 30 seconds on the clock to shoot, you're running out of time, or it's your last shot before the game's over. So that is what clutch means.